Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to learn about how to merge or join data using the pandas library in Python. Now, when you first start a data analytics project, you might not have all of your data in a single file like a CSV or Excel file that you can just load in and start using right away. You might have your data split across several different tables or other data sources that you need to combine together in some way into one single data frame that you can work with. Two different data sets or data tables can be joined together as long as they have a column in common that can be used to join the records together. So in this lesson, we're going to go through some of the different join operations that you can do using the pandas library. So we're going to just start off by loading some necessary packages here, numpy, pandas, and the OS module. And we're going to start off by creating some fake medical record data that we can use in two different tables, and we're going to join them together in a few different ways. So I'm just going to run this code cell and we can see what the resulting table looks like. It looks like we have eight records here with some different columns that have general information about medical patients. So there's a patient ID, there is a gender, height, and weight column. Now we're going to make a second table with some different information. So I'll run this code cell and now we have another table. This also has eight records, but some of the columns are different. We see here, this also has a PID or patient ID column, but it has some different columns too, like visits, checkup, follow-up, and other things that might be related to health information. If we wanted to use both of these two different tables at the same time as one larger table, we would have to join or merge the two together. Thankfully, they have a column in common here. The PID or patient ID column is common between the two data sets, so we can use that as a target column to join the data. So to join data in pandas, we can use the pd.merge function. So we'll show how to do that here. We're going to make a combined version of the data frames. To do that, we're going to say pd.merge. The first argument is the first data frame or table that you're going to merge. The second argument is the second table. And then there's an argument called how that is the joining method that you're going to use. In this case, we want to do an inner join which takes both tables and joins them on the, a common key column. And it only keeps those records where both tables have the same key numbers in them. So with that patient ID column, this inner join is only gonna keep records where the records are in both of the patient ID columns for both of the tables. If there's records that are in one but not in the other, those will be thrown away when you're using an inner join. And then finally, we have another argument on equals patient ID. The on argument specifies what the key column you want to use to join the two tables together on is. And we know that patient ID is in both of our tables, so that is the key column we're going to use to join the tables together. So when we run this, we should have a single merged table that has records from both of the different original tables. So let's scroll down and look at it. We can see that now we have a bigger table that has columns that were in both of the original tables. We have gender, height, and weight from the first table, and then all of these columns from the second table. And the one that they had in common that we joined them on, patient ID, well, there's only one column for that because that's what was used to do the merge. Now you'll notice that this resulting joined table has fewer records than the original tables we looked at. We can see that there are only one, two, three, four, five, six records left here, whereas the original tables both had eight records. That's because when we ran the inner join, there were some patient IDs in both the tables that didn't exist in the other table. And since those patients couldn't be matched up with a corresponding patient in the other table, they weren't included in the resulting inner join. If you didn't want to throw away some of those records, you would have to use a different joining method that allows you to keep patient IDs even if they don't exist in the other table. For instance, if we wanted to keep all of the patient IDs from the first table, even if they didn't exist in the second table, well, we can do that using a different joining method known as a left join. So a left join takes the first table and then matches anything in the second table that it can, but 
if it can't find a match, it still keeps the records from the first table. So we'll show how we could do a left join on the same tables below. So this is going to be our left join. To do that, all we have to do is use pd.merge again. We're still merging on the two same tables. All we have to do is change the how from inner to left. This is going to perform a left join. And after we run this, all of the patient IDs from the first table are going to be here. So we can see we have patient IDs one through eight, just like in the first table. The main issue here is that if any of these patient IDs from the first table don't exist in the second table, after doing a left join, the columns that are in the second table won't have any values to fill in for those records. So we see here patient ID number three, all of the columns for the second table show missing values here because this patient wasn't in the second table, so there were no values to fill in. Now you can also do a right join, which is just the converse operation to the left join. It takes the second table, keeps all the patient IDs in the second table, and merges in the ones from the first table that it is able to. So we'll show how to do that. It's the exact same construction. All we do is change how to write. That will perform the right join. When we run this, we will see a very similar table to the one we saw before, but the missing values are in different places because the second table had patient IDs 9 and 10, but those weren't in the first table. So now we have some missing values under these columns that were only in the first table. If we didn't want to get rid of any of our patient IDs from either table, we can do what's known as an outer join or a full join. That takes both tables, keeps every single record or patient ID from both of them, and whenever there are patients that exist in one table but not the other, missing values will be filled in for the appropriate columns. So to do that style of merge, again, we can use the exact same merge construction, except we change the how to outer. So this is going to perform an outer join with our two tables. Let's run this. And now we see that every single patient ID that we had in both tables is here now, all 10 of them. But there are some missing values as well because patient three, we know wasn't in the second table. So they have missing values for those columns. And patients nine and 10, again, weren't in the first table. So they have missing values for these ones that are only in the first table. Now you may have noticed that this final table has two columns with different names that are actually telling us the same information. The first table had a column called gender, and the second table had a sex, but they both seem to have the same variable levels in them, so they have the same information. When we performed our join operation, we could have joined on multiple columns at the same time, namely the patient ID, but then secondarily a gender-related column to combine these two columns into the same thing so that we don't have this duplication. And then we could get rid of some of these not a number values because we would be able to fill them in with the appropriate value from the other table. So we'll show how we could do that below. First, we're going to rename the gender column in one of the tables to match the name in the other table. So we're just going to take our table one and then dot rename that column. So we're gonna say columns, we're going to rename the gender column into sex, and that is going to allow us to match on that now shared column name. So now we just have to rerun our outer join but when we specify what columns to join on, we're going to provide a list of columns to join on this time instead of just a single column. So we're gonna make a second combined data frame. Again, we're just going to merge on the two tables. We're still doing an outer join, but now when we join on, we're going to join on a list of the patient ID first, but we're also going to join on the sex column. Now, when we run this, we will see a resulting table where there is only one column for that sex or gender related information. And you can see it also doesn't have any missing values in it now. When performing join operations like this in the real world, you have to decide which records you need and which records you don't, and whether you're okay with introducing missing values into your data set. And if so, what sorts of methods you might need to use to fill in those missing values. So to wrap up, the pandas merge function can perform the common join operations you'll need to use to merge two or more different data tables together to use in your analyses. 
Now that we know how to prepare and merge data, we're ready to start learning about two of the most common tools for exploring data sets, namely frequency tables and plots. So we'll be exploring those two topics in the next two lessons. If you found this video useful, drop a like, hit subscribe, and I will see you again next time.